Well, hello, everybody, and welcome back to the last episode of the Rice Cast in 2022. I held on for a little drama there. Maybe <laughs> they were thinking, what's going on? What do we know? Just this is our last podcast of the year, Pastor. Year's over, and, um, you know, it's a, it's a good time to reflect. Uh, it's just one of those pivotal moments, you know, I think when you, you know, this is not a, a, a spiritual holiday, like right. a religious holiday, like Christmas and Easter and those meaningful times to us. And yet, it's part of the holiday season, and it, to me, there's always been a significance of, yeah. the, you know, you turn the calendar, you it's another year, and it causes people to reflect back and also look ahead. So, we hope that everybody's had a great, great holiday season, uh, and, um, uh, you know, and the holidays that are still to come with the new year, but um, uh, it is a good time just to kind of connect with folks and, and to reflect on things. It has. It, it's been a really special holiday season uh, at Calvary. Uh, we got um, uh, we're coming up here uh, on our New Year's Day service. Uh, hopefully, you've heard this already, but just want to remind everybody: we got one service on New Year's Day at ten forty-five at all of our campuses, and we'd love for you to join us. Want to talk a little bit more about uh, what's going on there here in just a little bit? But I think the first question when you come to the end of the year, Pastor, is what. What does the song "Old Lang Syne" really mean? I don't know. You know, it's one of those songs. I love the tune, <clears throat> like it just sounds so. I've I've read it. I just don't remember it. And and you start singing it. Yeah. For old acquaintance, well, like be forgot. Be forgot. And never more. Never called to mind. Never called to mind. That's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And then that's it. That's all you know. Like you like an old Lang Syne, and then it's you just keep singing "Old Lang Syne" after that, Syne. which you don't even know what that means. No. And but it's a great tune. It really is. And for some reason, you have to sing it on New Year's Eve. You've got to sing it's it. It's like a law. I think it's a law. Right. But everyone starts singing it, and then you realize I don't. I don't really know what the words. What are, are. we talking? I don't know what we're talking about. Do we want to forget these people? <laughs> I, what if we don't want to? Do we sing it if we don't want to forget them? <laughs> I don't get old Lang Syne. I've never. I've never. There's another song that I that I actually find quite charming on New Year's. Speaking of, because people come here for the holiday music, they takes. do playlist. Yeah. Uh, and it's uh, "What Are You Doing New Year's." <laughs> have you ever heard that song? No, I have. It's not pretty heard good. That. It's pretty good. There's a country singer, maybe Casey Musgraves does a fun what version. Are you doing? What are you doing? New you know, Year's? the New Year song playlist is significantly smaller than the Christmas playlist. It's very I mean, short. Very short compared to And people do that. They're like, you're playing Christmas music so early. They act like there's other holiday playlists. No. There's really not. No, there's a Christmas. There's Christmas. just there's Christmas. Music is about Christmas. And then for New Year's, <laughs> you blow a horn. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, blow yeah. a horn, you sing a song, you just repeat <laughs> three words over and over again. <laughs> that you don't know what they Old mean. Lang Syne. Right, right. And that, and but somebody, we wish you Old Lang Syne. We <laughs> hope you have the happiest of Old Lang Syne's, uh as we come up to the New Year. Yeah, I just thought, you, for this podcast, Pastor, I thought it might be... Uh, like you say, it's a time to reflect. It's a time you think back on the year that was. And so when you think back on 2022, uh, what are some of the moments? And we know we've said this a couple of times, and it's always good to kind of define here. But we know a lot of our family uh, listens to this podcast. They're part of the Calvary family. So they're they're along for everything we were experiencing. So in 2022, what do you what's going to jump out to you when you look back on this year? Well, I think we had some significant challenges uh, this year, uh, just personally and as a church. Um, and you look back on a year, and you're looking at the mountain peaks, and you're looking at the valleys, you know. And, uh, it, you know, not to go into all of those, because uh, some of those deal with personal personal issues, you know. Uh, but, uh, you know, we went through some challenges, and uh, some people remember some of the Southern Baptist uh, kerfuffle mm-hmm. uh, that uh, happened early in the year. That was painful. And, and then some just, you know, even internal personnel issues here that, that were, you know, less than ideal. So it was, it was painful uh, at times. Uh, we, we, had some, we had some challenging moments, but you also have just some tremendous victories to look back on. Uh, I think, you know, when I think about 2022, I'll think about the Crystal Beach campus mm. uh, where, you know, we had started talking about it in 2021, but it was still really a pipe dream. It was, you know, it, we, were, we were working on it in 2021, but 
it was 2022 that it came to fruition. We didn't know at the beginning of 2022, you know, exactly when we'd launch, who would be there, how many would be there. It's our fourth campus. Uh, who's going to be the campus pastor? Right. And, uh, and of course, now it's uh, just such a beautiful campus, and, uh, and uh, we're, we're grateful for that. I think of the transitions we've been through. We yeah. have uh, campus pastors, new campus pastors at every one of our uh, three campuses other than Clearwater. Mm-hmm. Uh, as Riley Lester has come back home to lead at East Lake, uh, uh, Tom and Karen Hutchins, uh, we were able to celebrate the end of their wonderful ministry and their faithful ministry, and uh, I just rejoice in that a few days ago. And Dan Pigsley is taking the role there, and uh, and Tim Kotler, of course, joining us at Crystal Beach. Mm-hmm. So, you know, there's been um, some good changes, uh, some good leaders stepping into place, and um, uh, a lot of a lot of things that we have to celebrate. Yeah, it really, uh, you know, I remember at the start of this year still feeling like we were kind of coming out of the COVID fog a little bit. Probably, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then now as we come to the end, kind of feels like that's that's in the rear view, at least a little, um, you know. I, it's still part of the culture. You know, I was just was reading a story this afternoon, so, you know, people are masking up again, and which mm-hmm. is fine. People can do what they want. I, we're not here to ridicule them or make fun. People yeah, yeah. have different reasons for doing different things. But uh, but for the most part, I think most of society has has um, has just realized that that's just going to be part of being a human being. Part of being in society is that there are certain risks, but the risks are worth it uh, mm-hmm. for community. You need connection. You need relationships. You need community, and um, and the risks are minimal when you compare those risks to other things. Mm-hmm. So uh, you're right. Uh, to me, that that has gotten further and further away. It's just you think back, it was two years ago, that we, you know, we weren't able to hold Christmas Eve services because yeah. of an outbreak that was going on, not only in our area, but on our team, not only on our team, but our worship team. You know, people got to me that year and said, uh, why aren't you, why are you having it? Be- because no one can sing. That That's why, because <laughs> all the people I have who that's, can sing right, are out. That's right. And that's kind of a big deal, Christmas Eve service. Right. We were just, you know, we just felt like the safest thing was to do it online that year. And that was so painful. That mm-hmm. was just so painful. Uh, my wife got COVID that year. Mm-hmm. You know, it was just a painful time. Uh, so it, it's uh, two years now from that. Yeah, we, we do. We, we, we are grateful. We seem to be We seem to be moving on. And, again, I know there are people who are still sick, and we're not trying to minimize that. And we're not trying to say there's no risk and, you know, trying to not say any of that. But it does seem to be more of a story in the past. Yeah. Yeah, we said wherever it was, you know, we, when you talked a lot during that time, you talked about what's the new normal or what is this? We're in the new normal. We're in that. Whatever that is, we, yeah. you know, we're in that. And that might be people wearing masks here and there more often than we saw them before. You know, I think about, too, one of the things I had noted was uh, CCHS. I think they had their – you know, of course, they – what that looked like for them was they had students in, in and out, some halves. And, yep. and I was just talking to Kyle Mullen about this recently. And this year – set record enrollment, and they're all on the campus. Yeah, that felt yeah. like a big thing uh, in big 2022. Big thing. I think a couple uh, state championships in this calendar year. Um, you know, More than uh, I know the softball team won a state championship. I, volleyball was last year, so I guess that would have been in the 21 year. Yeah. But, um, you know, just again, uh, I know the softball team won a state championship. Uh, we got to celebrate great sports teams, great year at CCHS. Uh, just – Again, a, a, a lot to celebrate there. I guess if I was to if I was to ask you to pinpoint, we were talking about some hills, some valleys, and a lot of the valleys were 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 personal to the family here, and it's maybe maybe best not to go into too much detail. But when you talk about some peak moments uh, as you look back on 2022, I know Crystal Beach launch, like you yeah. said, that was super fun. Um, anything else jump out of you is like, man, that was a moment where you just gotta you just gotta stop and. Uh, and make sure you look back and remember that. Well, you know, I I, I think uh, obviously that that is a big one because it's a new launch, and you look at you know new things, new launches. You look at as I said, these campus pastors coming in who mm. are just so obviously the right fit in every place. Um, I also think as we've approached the end here of this year, we're approaching the end of our three year X one hundred and fifty advance campaign. Mm-hmm. Uh, we launched that three years ago. And uh, in the fall of 2019, right on the cusp of 2020, we had no idea what was coming. So mm-hmm. 
honestly, the the X one fifty advance campaign has lived during this fog, this epic, this era of COVID yeah. that has been more or less through most of this three years defined by a COVID impact. And yet, here we are at the end, um, and our Calvary people know this. We just want to give praise to the Lord for this. Uh, we will give more than 100% of what was pledged. Uh, our people gave uh, pledged three years ago just under $12 million. Mm. This is above everything else we give. Right. Um, this was a special gift to X-150 to advance. And... Um, uh, we will go over twelve million dollars by. We're probably already there wow. by the end of this year. We we will be. We'll be over a hundred. That's pretty remarkable mm. uh, for a church to do. And then when you think about it during this period, I think even more remarkable. And you think about the things we were able to see accomplished uh, during this period: um, the building of the East Lake campus, mm-hmm. um, being able now to say that that's been completely built and debt free. Mm. Three years ago, if you could have said, you're going to build, you know, a $10 million campus and it's going to be completely paid for at the end of the campaign, we would have all just said, that's, you know, that is a great prayer, but right. boy, you're really stretching <laughs> Right, it. right, right. And, uh, you know, the, the Crystal Beach, you know, it, all those things are, are just represent to me so much of the Lord's faithfulness. And as we've shared in recent weeks, maybe the most exciting thing is what God has done in sending people out from our church. The fact that by next year, as many as 18 different people will be serving through the International Mission Board. Uh, In addition to all that, this year we planted a church in downtown Tampa, uh, John Antonucci, Channel Side. We launched that. Right. Um, We're preparing to to launch another church in the Pasco County area, Church Movement, uh, which is kind of will be celebrated here in the next uh, few days. We've already talked about it some. Uh, But... um, so, uh, you know, to be sending people out, mm. seeing a new campus, seeing in one year a new campus launches, um, it's now running, you know, north of 350 people every week. Mm-hmm. This was a church that was, wasn't sure they could hang on, mm. you know, under 20 people. Uh, we've just seen it. Um, I was just remarking with Tim Collar, our campus pastor there. I remember meeting with the Crystal Beach people in Crystal Beach Community Church, a handful of faithful people who just didn't want to see their church die. And I remember we were just talking to them about options, and we really weren't selling. We weren't trying to push anybody. We don't try to push anybody. We right. were just saying they had come to us for help, and we said, well, we could do this, we could do this, we could do this. And I said, now, we could do this. It would be the most radical option, and that is it, we could receive it, and it could become a campus of Calvary. Mm. But now that's the most radical option. I'm not sure you guys would be willing to do that. Mm. And uh, But um, I, we painted a picture that night. I said, but I do want you to see a picture of what would happen if, if we did that. Uh, this building would be full. Mm. There would be children in those those classrooms back there. This campus would be full of families and children and people of all ages. And we just painted a picture. And honestly, I thought, to myself afterwards, you know, maybe you were overselling a little bit. Maybe you <laughs> you put on your salesman hat a little too much because you don't know that it'll be back. You don't know that there'll be children. Yeah, yeah. Well, guess what? When we open uh, first Sunday, there's it's packed. Mm. Two services, children everywhere. We need more space than we have. It's just so exciting to see what God uh, has done in that community. And uh, so all of those things have happened in this X-150 advance cycle and uh, as we, we come to the end of it, mm-hmm. our X-150 initiative is not ending uh, because really it was a 10-year initiative right. to 2025. But this three-year cycle, we have seen much happen. And I'm just so thankful for the faithfulness of God's people. And so sometimes in the challenges and the difficulties and the, the, you know, the, the skirmishes, you forget to see what God's doing through it all. Yeah. And yeah. we have a lot to celebrate uh, at Calvary. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think uh, I think I've heard you in the last couple of days say as much. But I, for me, as we come to the end of this year, you really are thankful for this church family, and mm-hmm. just and just so proud. Uh, like just just things I keep hearing. We're in the top one percent of sending churches uh, for for in the IMB sending international missionaries. I heard the other day we're in the top one percent of foster care licensed families like mm. families from our of all churches our church is licensing the most foster families and you know you think as a staff and as a team there's things you work for and you work towards and you want to facilitate good things um 
but then when you think of the ways our church family just steps up and mm-hmm. just answers the the bell so many times, I think of recent things that have gone on and personal matters that I want to get into and share openly with everybody, but just seeing our church family step up, be there for each yeah, other, yeah. answer the call. Well, as we know, and a lot of people know, we had one of our staff families go through a very traumatic experience in the mm-hmm. last few days with a great tragedy in their family and our church family. If you're listening, you may not know, but uh, one of our staff uh, uh, in their family experienced a real tragedy. And uh, so it has been, you know, made this season even, there's just more, uh, you know, the, the weight of that has yeah. been felt during this season, which you're busy anyway. But I, I did see that, and I thought, you know, there's so many ways to measure the health of a church. Mm-hmm. Sin, you know, the old ways are just how many people are seated there, seated there on a Sunday morning, right? Right. And that's important. We want people to come, uh, but we're seeing things like how many are we sending? You know, how many churches are we planting? Mm-hmm. How many? Where is their gospel preaching? Whether it's a campus or a new church plant that wasn't there a year ago, that's there today, we can point to at least two of those right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, that, that you know, probably you put all that together, maybe four or 500 people. Um, the, the, the missionaries that have been sent out, mm-hmm. uh, that are being sent out. And, uh, and then when you talk about a family going through grief, what we've seen over the last few days is you can minister the health of a church to some degree by how many casseroles get brought to a house, mm-hmm. by how many calls get made, uh, by how much attention is made uh, to people who are grieving and, and, and people are there, and, and you, you really see the fabric, the strength uh, of a church family, and we've seen it in the last few days, I, I tell you, in just a huge, huge way. Mm. Yeah, we really have. And, and, it, and it, although it's been a year uh, of peaks and valleys, and I'm sure most of them are, um, it, it's also not only the church family, great, it's, it's a great place, there's a great energy there, but the team here, uh, like you said, people filling in different positions, people... Uh, as that's all gone, our last couple even just like staff meetings, gatherings, just feels mm-hmm. like, man, this there's a good momentum going into this year for sure. Yeah. Uh, although we went through some transition, some foreseen, some unforeseen, you know, uh, it, it feels so, uh, yeah, just just feel very, maybe I'm just speaking for myself here a lot, but feel very blessed to be on the team and feel very blessed to be a yeah. part of the There's church. a great sense in the room of our of our team and a great sense of health and camaraderie and trust and uh and that's just a that's a good feeling that's going to bear fruit that's going to have an Mm -hmm. impact and um again just watching all these campuses and the campus pastors and the way they're working together and everybody pulling in the same direction Mm -hmm. it's just a great feeling to be a part of that and uh i just i feel like that's going to have a huge impact and god has been good to us you know even even in the challenges God is at work, and we believe he's protected us from things. We believe that uh, uh, he's, he's guided our steps, and uh, he's there every step of the way. So as we end 2022, we end it with a heart full of gratitude and joy, and then a lot of excitement and expectancy because we don't think God brought us this far to, to say, okay, we're done. Uh, there's a lot more to be done, and we're going to hit the ground running in 2023 talking about all that we can do, because really this next three-year cycle finishes X-150. It Mm -hmm. was a 10-year vision. And the vision to be a multiplying church continues. But this has been a deliberate decade-long run at um, focusing on what does it mean to multiply leaders and to multiply a movement. And and we have seen some dramatic changes in how we do church and how we measure church health and, 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 and what we focus on. And now I feel like in these last three years are just a lot of that is going to just come to fruition in a great, great way. Yeah. Yeah. And that brings me to my next question. You know, as we close up 2022 and head to 2023, I'm sitting here at the table with you now uh, in front of a planner that says 2023 on it. (laughs) So we are right around the corner. What are you most what are some things you're most looking forward to as you look ahead to 2023? Well, when when when. We're going to roll out in the very first few days of 2023 uh, the next iteration of X-150. We're calling it X-150 Impact. Mm. X-150 Impact because we we want to see a kingdom impact. We want to see a continuing impact. Uh, Not just, you know, um, something that happened, it was over. No, a lingering, continuing, growing impact. 
And so in the first quarter of 2023, it will be one of those uh, times that, you know, it is a lot of work and it it can be challenging, but it's a wonderful challenge where we're going to spend a lot of time in the first quarter talking about uh, what does it look like uh, to impact uh, the future? Mm -hmm. What does it look like to impact our community? What does it look like to impact the world? Mm. And uh, we have some great goals in each of those areas. Uh, I think some really exciting goals. And um, we want to put those out there, which will will bring us, you know, through the finish line of X-150 in the Mm -hmm. sense of having to be a part of multiplying 150 churches, but also raising up champions, you know, impacting children um, and um, and a lot of things that go along with that. Mm. Does it? I, well, I'm curious, and well, I'm sure we'll talk more about this in the weeks to come. Uh, but does, I mean, we get to share some statistics about how far we've come yep. in X150 already. Uh, and I know, we, as we've even talked internally, I, I mean, for me, it is it is unbelievable. Mm. Um, and when I think about that, in the next three years, it's it's one thing ten years ago to say, wouldn't it be cool to plant 150 churches? Yeah. But when you you can put anything on a whiteboard, though, right. Pastor, you right. could write down, I want to plant a billion churches. Yeah. <laughs> you can put any number on 150 seems like an awful big number. Uh, and the fact that, you know, and obviously with God's faithfulness has brought us this far. And uh, But if things continue, you can safely say this, mm. if things continue at the pace they're going now in the next three years, 150 churches will have yep. we will have planted gonna, in this that vision. we've been a part of. Yeah, you know, we're we've not been claiming a part of all the credit. That's not the point. We're a part of. Right. We've invested in. We've been. A, you know, some we have been the sending church. Right. And, right. But but we will have been a part of helping to see 150 churches launched. And you're right. Uh, when we first started talking about it, it did seem kind of impossible. It was a challenge. And it forced us to rethink the way we do church and how allocate our resources mm-hmm. and how do we measure things and what do we count and what what is the real win? Is it addition or multiplication? Mm-hmm. And obviously, we'd like to have both. Uh, but if you're going to run after one, you have to really run after one. And mm-hmm. we decided to run after what would it look like to be a multiplying movement. And we're still running after it. But it's not like we're, we feel like, man, we've arrived. Yeah. But it, it's just so exciting uh, to be able to say that. We're well over 100 churches that we've been a part of helping to uh, plant. And we can count even the champions. A uh, champion for us is a young person mm-hmm. or a person, but often it's young people. Mm-hmm. But they have answered a call into gospel ministry. It's not to say people aren't champions in every walk of right, life. Right. But we wanted gospel champions. We wanted, We felt like if you're going to be a multiplying movement, you have to be raising up and sending out leaders. And uh, that is one of the most gratifying things to me mm. is uh, that uh, uh, I, I, we're going to be – you know, we're we're uh, we're not as far along there as we are the churches, but it's just been unbelievable mm-hmm. how many people are being sent out and raised up, and young people we have walking around here who are sensing a call to be pastors, church planners, and missionaries, especially. I mean, it's just unbelievable. The, yeah, the mission movement. Uh, I tell Paul Colton, if you just if you don't quit preaching on missions, we, everybody's going to be sent. Everybody's going to be gone. <laughs> uh, and I'm saying that tongue in cheek because I couldn't be happier. Yeah, it right, right. Is, is what we've been able to rejoice in. Mm-hmm. So some churches will go years and never plant a church. Um, we planted a church last year. We'll plant a church next year. At the same time, launched another campus. At the mm-hmm. same time, sending eighteen people to the mission field. That's we got. That's extraordinary mm-hmm. to be able to say that. And it it really is God's work, and it's the people of our church believing in that. Mm-hmm. So uh, there's a lot to say. Obviously, I don't want to roll everything out here, but uh, in, in 2023, early on, uh, we have a vision message coming up late in January. We're going to spend some time in the early days of January focusing on prayer and yeah. putting first things first. Um, and maybe we can talk about that a, a little bit, but... But uh, very soon in January, we will be talking about this is what we hope to do in the next three years. And, you know, when when you look at what God has done in the last few years, it's like, I can't wait to see what's going to be next. Yeah, absolutely. No, I do want to talk about that because this was an interesting thing. You know, you brought this up several months ago, uh, originally kind of floated the idea 
Uh, so I, I am kind of curious, maybe give us, give the listeners some of that, like what, what led to this. And I'll tell them a little story that we were, you know, we're talking about a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Christmas is a busy time for us. In fact, I was just joking with my sister. She works at Raymond James. And then I was like, how's your work going? She was like, oh, it's the end of the year. We're all kind of checked out. Yeah, you know, yeah, pick yeah. it back up in January. Mm-hmm. And I just said, well, it must be nice. <laughs> 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 and so we work right up to the end. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but of course we love it. And it's, it's all fun. Um, but you got Christmas, you know, we got, we got a lot of stuff going on in the first quarter, but you, you, you brought before the team, this idea of taking the first part of the year and really having an emphasis and a focus on prayer. Right. Uh, so maybe what's, what was some of the things that struck you about that as an interesting idea? Yeah. Just so everybody knows, uh, as we launched the year, uh, it, it's one of those odd years and somebody told me. I haven't done the math on this because of a leap year or something. It's going to be another like 10 or 11 years before this happens again. Oh, wow. That um, uh, that for Sunday to fall on New Year's. Hmm. Uh, so this is one of those years. Fell on Christmas, fell on New Year's. And um, so it probably won't happen again for a while. And uh, the more we thought about it, the more we thought it's a significant thing. We, we you know, we we gathered on Christmas, and and it was a wonderful time. We're gathering now on New Year's, and just want to encourage people to come. When you think about it, it's perfect. What would you rather do mm-hmm. on a New Year Day? It's the first day of the year. Mm-hmm. It's the first morning of the first day of the year, and the Bible talks about giving God our first fruits. Well. One of the fruits that we have is our time, our mm. life. So I can't think of a better thing to do on New Year's Day than to go and worship God and say, you are above all. Mm. You are first. And um, that's what we're going to do this Sunday, uh, this Lord's Day. We're going to gather on January 1st and say, you're you're the first. Mm. You're number one. You are God. And uh, worship him. So we do have one service on because uh, we know people are still traveling. And so it just makes sense to have one service on every campus. But what an important thing together. And we're going to start what we call 21 days of prayer. Now, what that means for us, a lot of people have done that and they've done different things. Mm-hmm. What we're going to challenge you to do is to step up prayer. Like mm-hmm. if you pray every, every day already, well, we want to help you do something a little extraordinary. Uh, add something to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you're not used to the habit of praying and maybe reading the scripture and spending time with God personally every day, that certainly is a discipline and a rhythm that is part of spiritual maturity. So uh, we want to help you do that. Mm-hmm. And we've created some tools um, that we will be sharing this weekend. Uh, you can download our app. It'll be on there. We've created, I think, a special page, Calvary US slash 21 days, 21 days yeah. uh, where we have devotionals. Uh, we have prayers. We have some video devotionals that are going out. We have something going every day. And we have a couple of special prayer gatherings mm-hmm. on the first three Wednesday nights of the year. And on the first um, three Sundays, um, which are part of the 21 days, uh, we're talking about prayer. Mm-hmm. So uh, the first message is going to be putting first things first. Mm-hmm. And um, that's what you ought to do on the first day of the year. Put first things first. First, Mm -hmm. I learned a long time ago, I remember John Maxwell saying, what comes first? You know how people make a list of things to do? Mm -hmm. Everybody, you know, sort of does. I don't know, I guess not everybody, but a lot of people are list people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he said, well, what should come first on your list? And he went through all the possibilities. You could do the easy things first, Mm -hmm. you know, get a little momentum Momentum, going. You could do the hard things first, get the tough stuff out of the way. He said, you could do the last things first. That is, whatever didn't get done on your list yesterday, you, Mm -hmm. you do that. He said, um, uh, but, you know, he went through about five options. Yeah. And then he said, they're all wrong. They're all wrong. He said, what you need to do is put first things first. Mm. He said, in every list, you put the most important things first. Mm. First things come first. So what's the most important thing? Well, God should be at the top of your list. Mm. Loving, serving, knowing, growing in the Lord. So we're going we're gonna to do that. And we're going to teach you on the first 21 days just to make sure that you're praying and you're reading the Bible, and we're going to have, as I said, uh, we're going to teach on prayer every Sunday morning. Uh, Jim Cimbala will be our guest on January 15th. We're yeah. very excited about having our friend Jim Cimbala, who has written so much about the power of prayer and has lived that out. He's just one of those guys, when I'm around Pastor Jim and Carol, um, I just... I love Jesus more when I'm around them. Mm. Like they, there is always a desire to love Jesus more and know Jesus. They're that kind of people. Yeah. 
I love them, and they've been an encouragement to me and our church. Uh, you spoke here, I, I don't know exactly when it was, if it was last January, the one before, but uh, we're excited to have him back. Uh, we had the Brooklyn Tab Singers last year, which yep. was, that was one of the highlights, frankly, for me in 2022. Oh, yeah, that's that right. night, I almost left that out. That was, what a night that was. I think you can still watch it on YouTube. That was January. Yeah, you and can. And it was, man, that's been, that's been viewed a couple hundred thousand times. Yeah. Uh, it's unbelievable, that night of worship. Uh, so anyway, they'll be here. So it's going to be a great couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. And then on the 22nd, after the 21 days, um, special prayer moments in every worship service. Mm-hmm. On January 22nd, the fourth Sunday, we'll share a Vision Sunday. That's where we'll kind of roll out. Hey, this is where we're going as a church in 2023. So it's going to be a great start to the year, and it starts with 21 days of prayer. Mm -hmm. And don't let it scare you. Mm -hmm. Like if you're going, oh, my goodness. No, no. This is why you can do this for 21 days. Mm -hmm. You can pray. And so I just want to challenge you. We're going to help you pray for 21 days. Mm -hmm. We're going to help you read the Bible for 21 days. We're going to help you for 21 days. Put first things first. Mm -hmm. Imagine the difference the entire year, in the entire year, if you just put God first. Mm. See, we're taught to put God first in our money, and then he'll bless the rest. We're taught to put God first in our time, first day of the week, and he'll bless the rest. Let's put God first in the first 21 days of the year and ask him to move in 2023 in an extraordinary way. I'm certain he will. Mm. Yeah, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a really exciting start to the year, and I, I'll quote you here because I, I, you kind of alluded to it. I just love this phrase that you've used uh, when you talk about something like prayer, and you say you, we're we're pushing you for extraordinary prayer, right? And what's extraordinary prayer? Well, it's extraordinary. So yeah. wherever you're at now, if you if you struggle to have any time in prayer every day, then maybe it's just you're carving out a couple of minutes. Uh, you know, we we are asking people to get on the app because every morning we'll push something out through the app that's just a little prompt it should only take you a couple minutes mm-hmm. and that might be for you let that's the extraordinary rhythm that you're building into you've never done something like that uh so it's just a, it's about a next step more than it is everybody spending four hours straight right. and if you're if you're a faithful prayer warrior maybe yeah. you've grown in the lord well let's do something extraordinary maybe add a day of fasting mm. uh, each of those three weeks yeah yeah uh or a fasting component uh, the prayer gatherings on the first three Wednesday nights mm-hmm. of the year, the first three Wednesday nights of the year, starting January 4th, will be prayer gatherings at all of our campuses. Mm-hmm. So maybe that's extraordinary, that I'm going to be a part of a prayer gathering. I'm going to prioritize that. So, uh, you know, what is extraordinary prayer? Whatever is beyond the ordinary for you. Mm-hmm. Stretch it. Step up and and uh, and lean into it. And let's give God, in some special way, the first 21 days of 2023. Mm. I love it. And I think we can all hope for better football performances from our respective teams uh, in 2023. Yeah, there, there's a few happy folks around, but <laughs> not too many. And uh, I guess the FSU people are pretty happy. They've had a good year. Yeah. And um, But uh, the uh, the rest of us, not so much. The rest of us, you know, the Bucks, they're they're still doing it. They're still out there. <laughs> We're hanging on by a thread as we <laughs> yeah. go into 2023. By a thread. Uh, so we'll look for We're better like, days. Uh, like, for those of you who are sports fans, we're in the worst division in the NFL. Yeah. And that is the only reason we're hanging by a thread. Right. We're a losing team. Yeah. We have a losing record. Right. And um, uh, the only reason we're alive is because every other team is a losing team. Right. So it's kind of like you're in one of those situations where you say, we're not very good. We're just better than those other guys. We're better than those other guys. It's yeah. Like, I've often say that that should be the slogan for some political party. Yeah. We're really, <laughs> we're terrible. We're just better than the other guys. Yeah. That's it. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's it. That's about the best you can say sometimes. You love you love to be a game or so under five hundred <laughs> as you head to the playoffs. That's that's the dream. But um, anyway, uh, we've had some good times around here. It's been a great year. I, I really do enjoy getting a chance to talk about a, a, a variety and sundry of things um uh here on the podcast and we look forward to next year talking about a lot of issues sometimes mm-hmm. we unpack sermons sometimes we unpack current affairs and critical events that are happening uh in culture and um uh you know um talk all, everything theology whatever and always manage to work in a little sports 
Got to do it. Uh, yeah, Sometimes well. there's weather. I think we were doing fashion there for a week <laughs> when we were running low on things to talk about. Uh, so, yeah, this is so fun. I Yeah, we, we actually just did a, 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 a dinner with some of our deacons and leaders, found out a lot of them are listening to the podcast. Yeah, we just appreciate everybody who listens, and uh, it really is uh, it's a, something I look forward to doing every week, and we love hearing from the RiceCast well, listeners. I, we certainly pray that everyone had a wonderful Christmas and mm. holiday and uh, for those of you going through difficult times, and there mm. are always those people, uh, we pray for you. I, I hope you uh, sense the comfort and love of, of your church family during this time. But I do pray that you will have a happy new year and uh, that in the new year, let's just begin regardless of where we are. If it's a good time or a difficult time for you, we can all put God first, and that's exactly what we need to do mm-hmm. as we begin 2023. So let's give God the first part and uh, trust him to bless the rest, and we look forward to beginning the year together. We just don't get to do that sometimes. That's so true. Uh, so we get to be literally almost the first thing we're going to do in 2023 is to come to church mm-hmm. and worship God. I think that is a great, great thing. Uh, we're, we're, maybe we're going to enjoy it so much we wish we could do it every year. We, but, you know, who knows? <laughs> but we're going to do it this year, and uh, I hope to see you this Sunday, January 1st, uh, as we get a new year started. Going to be a good time. I'll put the links uh, in the show notes like I usually do. I'll put calvary.us slash 21 days, so you can just click in there if you want to see that. I'll put a link in there where you can get to the My Calvary app if you want to jump in now. Make sure you're all squared away before we get rolling into 21 days of prayer. Uh, but as we've already said, you know, we love you. We love that we get to do this, and we uh, love hearing from you, that you're listening, how you're incorporating it. It's just fun, uh, and we will see you in 2023.